Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on Try Hack Me. I'm John, and today we're going to take a look at the room, how websites work. To exploit a website, you first need to know how they are created. Let's go ahead and dive into task one, how websites work. By the end of this room, you'll know how some websites are created, and we'll be introduced to some basic security issues. When you visit a website, your browser, like Safari or Google Chrome or Firefox, pick your poison there, makes a request to a web server asking for information about the page you're visiting. It will respond with data that your browser uses to show the web, or show the page. A web server is just a dedicated computer uh, somewhere else in the world that handles your request. So we are sending a request saying, hey, can I get this website uh, or get the page that is on this website? And the web server will send back that information or it'll say, hold on, I, I can't do anything with an error code or something like that. Let's go ahead and dive in here though. And here we can see a nice diagram where we have us on our browser uh, that we are making the request from the browser, it goes over the magical, wonderful fairy cloud that is the internet. And then we can see it emerges on the other side where the web server lives. The web server will respond, will, yeah, will respond with uh, a the appropriate code rather. Uh, typically this is gonna be 200, don't worry too much about that right now, but it's gonna have the content for the web page, generally speaking. And this goes back over the internet, back to our web browser, which can interpret that and render the web page, which is what we actually see here. There are two major components that make up a website. First, we have the front end or the client side, uh, the way your browser renders a website. This is what we actually see. And the back end, which is server side, a server that processes your request and returns a response. There are many other processes involved in your browser making a request to a web server, but for now, you just need to understand that you need to make a request to make a request to a server and it responds with data your browser uses to render information to you. So a little bit of a back and forth pattern there. What term describes the way your browser renders a website? That is going to be the front end. And there we go. Let's move into task two, HTML. Websites are primarily created using HTML, which is to build websites and define their structure, CSS or cascading style sheets, to make websites look pretty by adding styling options, and then JavaScript, which implements the complex features on page uses, or pages using interactivity. Hypertext Markup Language, or HTML for short, is a language websites are written in. Elements, also known as tags, are the building blocks of HTML pages, and they tell the browser how to display the content. It's sort of like a uh, sort of like a map that tells the browser, hey, this goes up in this spot, it needs to go above this other thing, or where it can get uh, things like images and other things like that. The code snippet below shows a simple HTML document, the structure of which is the same for every website, where we can see that we have the doc type declared up at the top, along with some other interesting details that we'll go over in just a moment. The HTML structure, as shown in the screenshot, has the following components. The doc type HTML defines that the page is an HTML5 document. This helps the standardization across different browsers and tells the browser to use HTML5 to interpret the page. The HTML element is the root element of the HTML page. All other elements come after this element. So think of it this way. We need to have HTML here at the start and then a closing tag at the bottom. It is a sandwich that holds everything else in because, you know, in order to make a sandwich, if you're making a normal sandwich, that is, you need to have a slice of bread on the top and a slice of bread on the bottom. Everything else this is kind of in an order, but we'll see how that devolves in the case of this website. Next, we have the head element, which contains information about the page, such as the page title. And we can see that's right up here with this title tag. And that would be the example of something that would be on top. Uh, the, uh, the body element is the next one, which defines the HTML document's body. Only content inside the body is shown in the browser. So this is where your actual content of the website would be. So, for example, let's talk YouTube. Uh, the, the video actual, the player is going to be in the body of that. That's because it's what renders and what we see on this web page. The H1 element defines a large heading. This can go from one to, I believe, six, if not a little bit further, where the one is the biggest one, and as you uh, increment that, it gets a little bit smaller. And then we have the P element, which defines a paragraph. That can just be a bunch of text on a uh, the website. This doesn't necessarily have to be a proper paragraph like you were probably taught in uh, English class. However, this is uh, something that it just says, hey, there's a bunch of text here. 
there are many other elements tags used for different purposes. For example, there are tags for buttons, so we have the button tag there, images, IMG, lists, and much more. Tags can contain attributes such as the class attribute, which can be used to style an element. So for example, we would use it to make it a different color. So we have this paragraph, which its class is bold text, or the source element, or attribute rather, which is used on images to specify the location of the actual image. So here we can see with this image tag, we have our source, and then actually says, hey, within the actual web server, we need to go into the image folder, and then we're gonna grab cat.jpg. An element can have multiple attributes, each with its own unique purpose. So for example, we have paragraph, attribute one, value one, and so on and so forth. This is just useful for whenever we need to actually uh, call uh, or navigate uh, this document or what's called the DOM uh, within either our styling with the CSS or further on within the JavaScript. Elements can also have an ID attribute. So we have the ID equals example here in that paragraph tag, which is unique to the element. Unlike the class attribute where multiple elements can use the same class, an element must have a different or must have different IDs to identify them uniquely. Element IDs are used for styling and to identify it by JavaScript. As I mentioned a little bit beforehand, think of it as a, that's how we can call out to specifically what we want to interact with. You can view the HTML of any website by right clicking and selecting view page source uh, in Chrome or view page source in uh, Safari. Let's go ahead and take a look at the questions. Let's play with some HTML. On the right hand side, you should see a box that uh, renders HTML. If you enter some HTML into the box and click the green render HTML code button, it will render your HTML on the page and you should see an image of uh, some cats. And here we can see if we scroll down, sure enough, we have a cat. We'll go ahead and mark that as completed. One of the images on the cat website is broken, fix it. And the image will reveal the hidden text answer. So it looks like we have, we are missing our .jpg here. And then we can go and click render that. And there we go. And we have our flag HTML hero. Add a dog image to the page by adding another image tag on line 11. So here we can see that we wanna add that here. And I'll actually just delete this. I'll type in IMG and then SRC equals IMG slash, let's see, dog-1.png. And there we go. Let's go ahead and add that. And then we have our dog. And that is going to be dog HTML as our flag. There we go. Let's go ahead and move into task three, JavaScript. JavaScript, or JS for short, is one of the most popular coding languages in the world and allows pages to become interactive. HTML is used to create the website structure and content, while JavaScript is used to have control or to control the functionality of web pages. Without JavaScript, a page would not have interactive elements and would always be static. JavaScript can dynamically update the page in real time, giving functionality to change the style of a button when a particular event on the page occurs, such as when a user clicks a button or to display moving animations. And before we move on, I'm gonna go ahead and click this button so the site on the side can change to what we need for this activity. JavaScript is added within the page source code and can be either loaded within script tags or be included remotely with the SRC attribute. And here we can see that we have an example of that script tag where we're specifying a source for that JavaScript file. The following JavaScript code finds an HTML element on the page with the ID of demo and changes the element's contents to hack the planet. And here we can see that we're navigating this document that we had so document dot get element by ID, and then we're specifying the ID that we're looking for is demo. And don't forget this ID attribute needs to be unique. And then inside that HTML of that uh, specific item, we're changing it to hack the planet. And note, because this is a string, don't worry too much about this right now. If this is uh, sounding confusing, because this is a string, it needs to be enclosed in quotes. HTML elements can have also have events such as on click or on hover that execute JavaScript when the event occurs. The following code changes the text of an element with the demo ID to button clicked. And here we can see we have our tag for our button 
And then we have specified on click document dot get element by ID demo again, because we're trying to get that demo uh, specific item. And then the HTML in there, we're gonna change it to button clicked. And then we have a text for the actual button of click me. On click events can also be defined inside the JavaScript uh, script tags and not on the elements directly. Answer the questions below. Click the view site button on this task. On the right hand side, add JavaScript that changes the demo elements content to hack the planet. And it looks like we have a spot for JavaScript right there. Let's go ahead and we can scroll up and we can see the actual example here. So we already have script tags, don't have to worry about that. And we can do document.get element by ID and note this is case sensitive. So if something isn't working, be sure to check that everything is cased out correctly. You can also copy this directly over if you'd like. And then we're looking for the demo element and then inner HTML, since we wanna change what the HTML is right here. And we can change that to hack the planet. And there we go. Uh, and we typically, because this is JavaScript, we need to have a semicolon at the end. And there we go. So we have our pop-up here. This is a little bit hard to read on my screen, but it's JS is fun in all caps. And I'll type that out here. JS is fun. And there we go. Add the button HTML from this task that changes the elements text to button clicked on the editor on the right. Update the code by clicking render HTML but, uh, plus JS code button and then click the actual button. That was, a, that was quite a bit there. Let's go ahead and copy this over and we can add just below this the actual button and we don't necessarily need that again but now we can go ahead and click that and it says button clicked because we've added this button down here and it says click me and it goes back and says hey wait a minute i have this demo element that i can go and change the actual uh, html of we'll go ahead and mark that as completed and move on to task five sensitive data exposure First and foremost, let's go ahead and click the view site button. Sensitive data exposure occurs when a website doesn't properly protect or remove sensitive clear text information to the end user. Usually this is found in the site's front end source code. We now know that websites are built using many HTML elements or tags, all of which we can simply or see simply by viewing the page source. A website developer may have forgotten to remove web or login credentials, hidden links to private parts of the website, or other sensitive data shown in HTML or JavaScript. And here we can see that this is a comment in the actual HTML document itself that has credentials. This is very common to see, especially as you're getting into uh, beginner pen testing boxes, you will see that this happens. And it's always worth taking a look at the source code of a website, especially if you're doing something like bug bounty. You never know what you're gonna find and it's it more than often is pretty interesting. Sensitive information can be potentially leveraged to further an attacker's access within different parts of a web application. For example, there could be HTML comments with temporary login credentials. And if you viewed uh, the page's source code and found this, you could use those credentials to log in elsewhere in the application, or worse, use to access the backend components of the site. That would not be good if we could get to a database or something like that. Whenever you're accessing a web application or assessing a web application for security issues, one of the first things you should do is review the page source code to see if you can find any exposed login credentials or hidden links. View the website in this task. What is the password hidden in the source code? So let's go ahead, let's try logging in with admin and then we'll do admin. And if we click login, it looks like that's not gonna work. Let's go ahead and click on this and we can pull up the source code. And this is a little bit small, Let's make this a bit bigger. And it looks like, sure enough, there is a comment block here with test pass WD that uh, should allow us to log in. Let's type that in here. And let's try admin test pass WD, just to see what happens. And congratulations. I don't know what I expected. Oh well, we'll take it. <laughs> let's move into the final task, HTML injection. As always, let's go ahead and click the view site button. HTML injection is a vulnerability that occurs when unfiltered user input is displayed on the page. If a website fails to sanitize user input, so 
filter any malicious text that a user inputs into a website, and that input is displayed on the page, an attacker can inject HTML code into a vulnerable website. If this doesn't make a ton of sense, think of it this way, we can essentially add our own code and potentially do a lot of bad with this, from remote code execution to cross-site scripting or other things like that. If this is going over your head right now, don't worry too much about it. Just know that if we can add code to a website as an end user, that's very bad. <laughs> Input sanitization is very important in keeping a website secure as front end or as uh, information a user inputs into a website is often used in other front end and back end functionality. A vulnerability you'll explore in another lab is database injection, where you can manipulate a database lookup query to log in as another user by controlling the input that's directly used in the query. But for now, let's focus on HTML injection, which is client side. That means it's gonna show up on our actual page. When a user has control of how their input is displayed, they can submit HTML or JavaScript code and the browser will use it on the page, allowing the user to control the page's appearance and functionality. So here we can see that we have an input field here and we can see that it's going into this JavaScript function and it's returning back that name up here. That's not good because this is not sanitized. We're not checking to see if, you know, the person that's putting this in here has bad intentions and is entering something that's kind of dangerous. The image above shows how a form outputs text to the page. Whatever the user inputs into the what is, what's your name field is passed to a JavaScript function and output to the page, which means if uh, the user adds their own HTML or JavaScript in the field, it's used to say in the say hi function and is added to the page, which means you can add your own HTML, such as an H1 tag, and it will output your input as pure HTML. Try saying that 10 times fast. <laughs> the general rule is to never trust user input. It doesn't matter if you think your users are all wonderful people and they're gonna put in you know nothing bad. You have to operate on a model of sanitize anything that comes in. It has to happen. If it's not there, you're going to have a bad day. To prevent malicious input, the website developer should sanitize everything the user enters before using it in the JavaScript function. In this case, the developer could remove any HTML tags. Answer the questions below. View the website on this task and inject HTML so a malicious link to http forward slash forward slash hacker dot com is shown. So let's try, uh, let me just put in my name and we can see that it's reflected back up here. And if I go and let's see, we'll do an at. So this is the HTML code for an actual link. And we want to do, uh, let's see, href equals HTTP hacker.com. Don't worry too much if this is a little bit over your head right now. And we're going to put this inside here just for funsies. So that's the actual text that will be displayed. And then we need to close out our link tag. And I'll scroll back through this just so you can see everything that's here. Pretty straightforward. So we're just adding in a link to the web page. And then we're specifying, hey, I want you to go here. And there we go. And there we go. That's going to be our answer. And we have our flag HTML underscore injection. And we'll go ahead and copy that. That's a bit hard to read. And it looks like some of the letters are changed out for numbers. So the three or the E is a three and then the O is a zero. And there we go. That's gonna do it for this room. As always, if you have any questions, the Try Hack Me Discord and the subreddit will be linked in the video description below. However, until next time, happy hacking.